What's up, everybody? It's Devin. I have a small collection that I purchased, so we're just gonna make a video breaking down everything that was in the collection, the different price points, what I paid, what I valued, um, so you guys can kind of get behind the scenes look of what happens when somebody drops off a small collection from me and I buy it. So this one came from <clears throat> a local collector. Uh, his name is Ryan, super easy to work with. We've done many deals before. So thank you to Ryan for giving me the opportunity to buy these cards from you. Um, basically just gave me everything. I went through it. I priced everything out based off of what I think the value was. And then from there, we put it into different categories, um, paying different percentages based off of the different values. Um, and I'll kind of go through that um, as I go through the lot and kind of showcase what I did. He then got a chance to go through it. If he didn't think or agreed with some of the values, he took some of the cards out, kept them for himself, what he was comfortable selling at the percentage of the values that I listed. He let me purchase them. Um, so that's kind of how it worked for this lot. Um, and then that was it, basically. Um, so I'll go through it. We got a couple different stacks here, and I'll explain them. We'll go over the cheap stuff first, what I consider stuff that I'm going to throw into my value boxes, um, and then we'll kind of increase from there. So these two stacks here on the left, which I'll go over first, uh, these were all cards that were available on eBay for anywhere between a dollar to three dollars, four dollars. I'm going to throw them in my value boxes, either my dollar box or my prices marked and put two, three dollars, four dollars on them. And I think they're going to sell anywhere between a dollar to three dollars. Um, so nothing too crazy here. Everything here I paid a quarter, a card on. So 25 cents a piece. I think there was a little over 100 cards. I'll kind of go through and showcase you guys. Um, a lot of just like the top names rookies nothing too crazy i mean that's just a veteran parallel um base rookies of aiden hutchinson will probably be in the dollar box some Najee harris and then you got some prism numbered stuff of some veteran guys not some huge names rookie numbered um and jonathan abram brian burns montez sweat david johnson like those guys aren't huge names um but it's just numbered prisms that you know team collectors or player collectors will enjoy searching through my dollar box for um yeah it's kind of just a variety of that i think that was the only one that was an older card the uh joe theisman um but there was a couple cards there was a stack of cards that i even think i could sell uh, in my dollar box, or I didn't feel comfortable putting in my dollar box, so I set those to the side for him, um, and he took those back, but this was everything that I felt comfortable throwing into my one, two, you know, three dollar box at a card show. These, the reason why I pay a quarter a card is A, they take so long to sell, B, you can't sell them online, because it would cut into any margins that you have. Uh, and then see when you go to shows, which is the only place that you can sell them, there's a ton of costs of going to a show, setting up at a table. Um, so you factor all those things in when, when working a deal like this on, uh, cheaper cards, Jamar Chase, Ben Mason. I mean, a lot of this stuff is like no names too. Like Cooper Cup is decent. Eric Dickerson is okay. But then you got a random rookie auto like that. Julius Chestnut. I mean, Cameron Hayward numbered from score is probably going to go in the dollar box. So just a lot of stuff. It was basically anything was numbered, autograph, or memor memorabilia of people that weren't, you know, like a household name. Um, I think it was all football, if I can remember correctly. And then if it was, you know, base, sort of like a, a non-numbered parallel, it had to be a decent name. Um, like the A.J. Dillon is numbered. Kirk Cousins, I'm in Michigan, so Michigan State fan might want to pick him up for a buck. Um, so that was kind of like the thought process behind this. A lot of this stuff, too, I didn't spend a ton of time um, evaluating the value on these just because I've had experience selling a lot of these cards. So I kind of know what I can throw in like my one, two or $3 boxes and what will sell and what won't, um, or what I'm willing to take a gamble on to see if it sells. So that was everything. I think it was like 116 cards. 
uh, that were a quarter a piece that I thought were going to sell anywhere between a dollar to three dollars. Next up, this stack uh, is everything that I paid one dollar on. Then everything that I paid one dollar on, I thought it would sell anywhere between like four to eight dollars, um, somewhere in that range. Some of the stuff I might stick on sticker for like nine, but knowing people are going to counter me on all that stuff, so it's like if you sticker something at four, you expect somebody to offer you three bucks um, or even less sometimes. So. This is all the stuff that was in between that four to eight dollar range that I paid a dollar on. Justin Fields, rookie memorabilia, uh, Prism Raheem Mostert, Blue Shimmer, Tyree Kill, Red Wave, uh, Drew Sanders, Auto Out of 50, Kellen Mon, Black White Checker, Traquan Smith, Auto Out of 5, David Ajabo, Red Auto, Patrick Mahomes, Prism Die Cut, Trevor Lawrence, Base Prism, Damian Harris, Genesis, Stefan Diggs, Blue Ice, that's numbered out of 99, Brilliance Insert, Blue Ice Rookie out of 99, Quinnen Williams Auto, Velas Jones, Chunky Patch, uh, Rookie there. And some of this stuff like I, I think will be tough to sell just based off the names. We'll have to see. Uh, like King Awangu, that might be a tough one to move. Kyler's kind of picking up right now. Brock Purdy rookies that are just some Chronicles retail base. Uh, Jalen Waddle jersey, Garrett Wilson numbered rookie. And then a BGS 9.5 blue auto 150 of Javier Hernandez. So that was all stuff that I paid a dollar on. Like I said, was in between that four to eight dollar range is kind of the expected sale price. Um, but obviously, I expect people to kind of negotiate me when at a card show for that stuff. Uh, next pile, this is anything that I deem to be like ten to eighteen dollars. Uh, I paid five bucks on. So if it's on the lower end, the ten bucks, I'm paying fifty percent, um, which is kind of on the higher side for cars that are ten dollars. Uh, but then when it gets up to the fifteen to eighteen, it's definitely a lot lower. Um, so it kind of just evens out over time. A uh, Derrick Henry Origins jersey out of ninety nine, three color patch chunky of Warren Moon out of twenty five. Uh, Jordan Love, that's a rookie memorabilia from playoff, 400 Panini points, and then a Fernando Tatis PSA 9. Like this one I know off the top of my head was a $10 card, so I mean that one's definitely going to be on the cheaper side. But like even like that one, like a $10 card like this, I can't even sell it on eBay, so if you were to, send a t if you were to sell a $10 slab on eBay... Um, minus eBay fees, which for me are around 12%. You return 880, and then you got to ship it first class or the USPS ground advantage, which is four dollars. That gets you down to 480. Then you account for shipping supplies, which is 50 cents typically. So, like, if you were to sell this on eBay for ten dollars, you would only turn four dollars and thirty cents. So, like, a card like this that is on the cheaper end, I technically technically paid Ryan 70 cents higher than what he could get for it on eBay. Um, but then some of this other stuff, like I think 400 Panini points sells closer to $15. That's where I can have some of my, my margin in my room, uh, on stuff like that. So that's kind of where I got those price points from kind of evens out, um, over time when you buy a lot of that stuff. All right. Next stuff is anything that I valued $20 and up came into different price points um so let's see i get two yeah i'm just gonna go through this they're kind of mixed up now um because i just organized them by top loaded cards and then graded cards um so i'll kind of tell you what the value of the card was the percentage uh that it was in and then uh what i ended up paying for it specifically so you got this was the most expensive card in the lot, which was kind of surprising because it was a collegiate uniform. You got a Trevor Lawrence mosaic giraffe picks, um, Trevor Lawrence rookie autograph um, from 2021 in this Clemson uniform. I valued this at 130 bucks. Uh, this was in the 70% category, so I paid $90 for the Trevor. Javon Holland, Prism Green Scope out of 75. Uh, sticker auto I valued this one at $30 this was part of the 50% so anything between 20 to $40 I would give 50% on um, and this one ended up being $15 that I paid for it George Kittle prism sensational signatures this is going to be serial numbered 
out of 149, 50 out of 149. The George Kittle, uh, let's see, where'd you go? Ooh, $90 was the value. This was in the 65% range, which is anything between uh, 60 to 61 to like 99 is 65%. So $90 card, I paid $59 on it. George Kittle, Red Shiver. Uh, this was valued at $32 and I paid $16 because it was in the 50% range. Tom Brady from Panini Black. This is the copper out of 25. Same thing or similar here. Valued it at $30, 50% range. Uh, I paid $15 for the Tom Brady. And then a newer hockey. I think this was the only one that was a non-football in here. It was a Young Guns of Luke Hughes from uh, 2022-23-24 Series 1 Hockey. Um, this Young Guns I valued at $35 and I paid $18. It was in that 50% range. So next up you got the slabs. You got a Tua non-rookie autograph. This is from 2022 score. Autograph gold zone. Numbered out of 50. Sticker auto graded a PSA 8. Uh, the Tua I valued at $120, so it was that 70% range. Anything that's $100 to $200 um, is 70%. So this Tua valued at $120, I paid $84 on the Tua. Ant Man, this is the last one that falls in that 70% category. Uh, 2020 Mosaic Ant Man Reactive Blue. This is his true rookie. Um, he's got three different variations in Mosaic. You got the True, you got the Debut, and then you have the National Pride. Um, so you have kind of three different ones. This is considered his most valuable, his True Rookie Reactive Blue. Uh, PSA 10 there on the grade. Valued this at 105, so it hit the 70% range um, just barely, and I gave $74 for the Ant-Man. James Cook, 2022 Mosaic Genesis Rookie, also his true rookie card from Mosaic, graded at PSA 10. The James Cook I valued at $80, so I paid $52. This was the 65% range. Sean Alexander, I was surprised how cheap this one was. I mean, you look at something like this, James Cook is valued at $80. The Sean Alexander was only valued at $40. This is from 2021 Prism, uh, Sensational Signatures Gold. Sticker auto, but this is serial numbered out of 10 for Sean Alexander. This specific card, serial numbered one out of 10. Graded a PSA eight, um, valued at 40, because it was at the 40, right at that threshold, it was still the 50% range. So 20 bucks here on the Sean Alexander. Next up, you got Ramondre Stevenson, uh, 2021 Prism RPA. Uh, from Prism. You got a nice chunky four color patch there, sticker auto, PSA 8, serial numbered out of 99 for Ramondre. This one we gave a $25 value to in that 50% range, so I paid $13. And this Trevor was the cheapest out of the prices marked section. This is a 2021 Select uh, Red Blue Die Cut Prism PSA 9 for Trevor. Value this one at $22. Half of that was $11. So definitely some of these I have some room to work with um, compared to some of these other ones are definitely going to be much smaller room. Um, but that's kind of like the give and take. The more valuable the card, the higher percentage I'm willing to offer. The cheaper the card, the lower percentage of the value I'm willing to offer because of the amount of work that it takes to make a couple of bucks. So that was everything from the lot. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing kind of behind the scenes on what I valued stuff, the different lots um, and value ranges that I portioned things out into and kind of what I offer on those individual price points. If you're ever interested in selling a collection like this, it can be smaller than this. It can be the same size. It can be much bigger. Um, I'm always interested in purchasing collections like this. It's something I, I very much enjoy doing. Um, I bought a good amount throughout this year so far. If you're ever interested, you can reach out to me via my email or on social media. My email I'll have on the screen here, tradingcardbrothers10 at gmail.com. You can kind of email me, just tell me a little bit of what you got, 
Um, you can you can say price points, you can say whatever you want. Uh, we'll kind of work through it uh, as we go. Or you can reach out to me on my social media accounts, which will be linked in the description of this video. I can always respond there as well. So that was this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Everybody have a great day and don't forget to smile. Later, guys.